Nurses have reddit what is the most haunting last words patients have said to you? When I was 19 I was working in a lab at a hospital as a phleb, and I was really really good at drawing blood. Was called to her to draw blood from a 12 year old at around 7am. He had spider web looking, veins all over his body except hands, feet and above the neck. Drew blood. No big deal. Called back again to draw a second sample. Everything was purple. He looked up at me, and asked me, if he could have some water. I looked at the attending, and he shook his head back quote no, and then mouthed back quote we are about to intubate. He grabs my hand and two seconds later he went into arrest. His parents were outside the room looking in through glass. Mom was bawling. Dad was bawling. Everyone did chest compressions for what seemed like 45 minutes. He died. Last thing he said to anyone was to ask for some water. From me. I left. Kept my composure. Got to a private hallway and started bawling. Entire way back to our office. Walked into my boss's office and said back quote I quit. Turns out kid had bacterial meningitis. Not a nurse, but we had a guy who was in a major MVA. His left arm was severed above the elbow and he was circling the drain. His blood pressure was tanking, pulse was starting to fade. And he asked me about his dog that had been in the vehicle with him. Asked me if his dog was okay. I didn't really answer him, as the dog was dead, and I didn't want to put him in any more distress than he was already in. We landed a helicopter, and I shit you not we were about 30 seconds from loading him into the helicopter when he coded. If you know anything about traumatic CPRs there is virtually no chance that they will survive especially without deficits. Maybe like a 1-2% chance I can't remember the exact number. Anyway we worked him, got him loaded back into the ambulance, and made the 35 minute plus transport to the trauma center through rush hour traffic. Got him into the trauma bay, the doctor said they were going to do one more round, and if there was no improvement they were going to call it, which they did. So the last thing the guy said, was make sure my dog's okay. Ultimately he died from internal hemorrhaging which there's nothing we could really do in the pre-hospital setting for him, if we had TXA or something like that we cold fused it, but it's a toss up whether it would've helped this guy at the point he was at. My mom was sent home from the hospital, because she was nearing the end, and wanted to be home. The last few days she was heavily medicated, and didn't really communicate at all. On Sunday she took off her oxygen mask, and said she was going to die tomorrow. She put her mask back on, and didn't talk anymore. I called out of work, that was an odd call to make, and called the family. Her twin drove 4 hours, to be there on Monday. She died Monday evening with her whole family at her side. It has been 4 years and it still weirds me out. After dad graduated medical school he was a resident in an inner city emergency department. One night rescue brought in a guy the department knew of, major health issues, major addiction issues, and a real scumbag to boot. When rescue found him, he'd been laying in his own filth for days. His chest x-ray was lit up like a Christmas tree with pneumonia, as my dad tells it. His heart was in even worse shape. Even while laid up in bed this guy still found time to harass the nurses, throw out every name in the book, real nice dude. So my dad was at the nurse's station when he notices an irregular rhythm on this guy's heart monitor when dad tells it he likes to make a repeating M shape with his finger. He was going into ventricular tachycardia. Not a great sign. So he headed over. My dad stood in the doorway and said, hey buddy, how do you feel? And the guy looked him in the face and yelled, with my hands, you jerk off. And then he died. I don't want to die, looking straight at me as blood poured out of their mouth from esophageal varices that had ruptured, a lethal death sentence, as the patient knew well. I still remember the color of their eyes. <laughs> Obligatory not a nurse but. My great uncle's last words were about having to catch the train. My grandpa's last words were about getting on the ship. My dad's last words were about making his flight. I've told everyone I've ever dated to wake me the fuck up, if I ever start talking in my sleep about transportation. I worked as a CNA in a nursing home for 2 years, when I was in nursing school. We had patients on hospice frequently, most of them at the end just peacefully slipped away. We had one gentleman who was always just. If he wasn't trying to grab at my behind he was yelling at me over something I couldn't help, like the lights in the hallway or his roommate snoring. 
he used to change his TV every time I came in his room so we could watch Shark Week and trashy reality shows. He got a very bad diagnosis and went downhill really really fast over the course of a week or so and we called his family. They were on their way but they wouldn't be there for a while so I stayed with him the first night that we all kind of knew he didn't have much longer. He was panicking. He wouldn't settle down. He kept saying, help me, and there was nothing I could do. I just held his hand, and told him over, and over he wasn't alone. He was like that for 2 or 3 days, before he slipped into a coma. It still breaks my heart. I think about him looking at me, that way and frantically asking for help, then telling me he loved me, then asking for help again. I wish there was something I could have done. I've seen death plenty of times, but I've never seen that before or since. I hope I never have to- Not a nurse, but the last words my mother told me before she died was I feel a lot better. She had been battling breast cancer and doing chemotherapy the last couple months. Still makes me cry. Actual nurse here. The superstition is that patients will feel a sense of impending doom when they are going to die. Sometimes, everything looks great on paper, then they say I think I'm gonna die, and then 12 hours later they are lifeless. The first time this happened to me, it was at the end of a crazy 12 hour shift, where my patient had gotten progressively worse, from mildly sick to dead. When I walked on that evening, he looked me in the eye, and told me he was dying. He was just on a touch of blood pressure and dialysis support. We did all the scans, all the lab work, but nothing could explain why he was tanking so fast. And then, right before he died 12 hours later, he grabbed my hand, looked me in the eye, and said I told you so. Has happened a few other times, but that was the creepiest. Not the very last words, but I found them quite unsettling. A few years ago my best friend lost her fight with cancer. Her mother had also died of cancer when my friend was 21. I helped care for my friend right to the end, so she could be home instead of in hospital or hospice, and I was there when she died. About an hour or two before that, she started getting very agitated, and asking for some very specific things, some buttons of a certain color, a particular item of clothing, a few other things. Her sister realized that she was asking for things her mother had been wearing or had in the room when she died and got very upset and told her that she didn't need them, it was okay without them. My friend looked at her and said don't worry, mum's telling me how to die. She was seeing her long deceased mother and thought she needed the same setting before she could die. I assume that it was a hallucination, she'd been having them for a couple of days at that point after her pain meds were increased, but it was very unnerving to witness, and seemed different to the other hallucinations she'd been having. Maybe she really did see her mother. That moment certainly brought me closer to believing there might be an afterlife than religion ever did. My first that died on me was a 90 plus year old man full of cancer and demented. He was so confused, and kept taking off his oxygen. His last words to me were leave me alone, or I'm going to punch your lights out. Went into respiratory arrest a while later, we coded him, but didn't get him back. Middle aged female was in for hypokalemia, recent GI bleed with transfusions. I was hanging I've potassium, it tends to burn a little, so she was not thrilled about it, but she was able to sleep. She woke up, when I was hanging back to quarters, so I told her three more to go. She said yippee or hooray. Something like that. About 45 minutes later, she coded out of nowhere, got to the room, and it was a bloodbath. We think she had esophageal varices that burst and she basically bled out. I work hospice now. My most favorite patient lived alone, so when the end was near, we put him in the hospital for proper symptom management. I had the day off, so the nurse who transferred him called and let me know. I stopped by the hospital that evening and said my goodbyes. He said thank you and went unresponsive shortly after I left and died just after midnight. He was a grumpy old turd and I still miss that man. Not a nurse, but had a kid who was just standing on a sidewalk in a bad neighborhood. Drive by shooting which of course missed their target and hit this kid and an older gentleman. Older guy was though a kid got hit in the arm once and chest twice barely clinging to life. 
only thing we ever heard him say before he went unconscious was how much pain he was in and that he didn't want to die which a few minutes later happened. I've never worked so hard on a part before or since. Partner quit the next day and I'm still going 13 years later. Had an elderly woman who was intubated and sedated. When you have a patient who is sedated, you turn down their sedation and try to wake them up, kind of, every morning to test their readiness to come off the ventilator. She never really woke up. Her adult son was distraught. He was her next of kin, and he had to decide if he was going to take her off the ventilator or keep trying. He agreed to take her off the vent the next day. I was in her room later that day, and I was chatting with her, like she could hear me. When suddenly, she responded. She made a purposeful nod. I was startled to say the least. I took her hand, and tried to figure out how to explain to her what was happening. She was dying of cancer, she was failing her weans, and we planned to take her off the vent tomorrow, to die with her son by her side. And I asked, is that okay? She nodded. Do you want me to call your son, and tell you, that you love him? She nodded. I wish I could remember what we talked about next. Did I pray with her? Did I comfort her? I don't remember. But I do remember calling her son, and telling him, that his mom knew, she was ready, and that she loved him. I have had several elderly patients tell me their long dead relative will be coming by to get them at a specific time. Every single patient that has told me that has died at the exact time the patient said they would. I've also learned to take note when a patient said he or she is going home tomorrow, especially when you know that patient isn't going home tomorrow. Saddest, my favorite patient I had been seeing for years she was in the end stages of liver failure. One morning she didn't recognize me. This is a patient who knows me well. She knew my child's name my dog's name we have a very long history. I cried when I saw her labs. She died very quickly and all I could do was hold her husband's hand and pray for her. It was so sad. She was only 40, had two young children. I see her husband every once in a while in town. He seems so sad every time I see him. I've posted about this before. I worked as a home hospice RN for a couple of years. We had a couple on service and they were the sweetest. We assumed the husband would pass first, but his wife actually went first. He deteriorated very very quickly. He died days later. Right before he took his last breath the door to their house opened and he said, come on in, dear. They loved each other so much, I'm not sure I believe in an afterlife, but I hope they're together. I was working in a pediatric cardiac intensive care unit, and we had just admitted a toddler from the addition. She had just beaten cancer, but wasn't feeling too great. They got an echo that showed severe cardiomyopathy, most likely from the chemo, which we caught too late. As we were tucking her into the suku, the docs let her mom know how sick she was, and mom started losing it. Mom was frantically calling her husband to come to the hospital ASAP. The toddler was still pretty with it to this point and asked her mom, Mommy, why are you crying? Her heart started giving out within the next hour and she died while we were trying to get her onto bypass. Her mom's wails still haunt me to this day. They weren't last words, but words spoken in a shocking lucid moment. I was helping a patient in my rehab unit to bed. She had profound dementia and mostly babbled incoherent nonsensical sentences. I just nodded and pretended to converse with her, which she enjoyed. This night though she stopped and abruptly looked at me and said sternly tempus fugit. Remember that. It's important. I just grinned and laughed a bit and then got her to bed. I looked up the meaning later. It's always interesting to me that the most common thing my patients use their lucid moments for is to tell me the things they want me most to know about life. I don't remember what his exact last words were, nor am I a nurse, but I remember the most meaningful thing my grandfather did for me before he passed. He was suffering from a severe cancer all over his body, and he had refused treatment, since it was already everywhere, when they found it, and it was his third time getting cancer. So at his deathbed he could barely open his eyes and couldn't speak. But one thing he could do as I cried and told him how much I loved him was squeeze my hand. It was his way of telling me he heard me and loved me too. I will never forget him as long as I live. I love you grandpa Zuck so hope you're playing your guitar in heaven. 
not a nurse. My sister was in IQ at a hospital about 3 hours away from me. I went to visit her, and when I got there my brother-in-law told me that they were switching the machines off as all her organs were failing her, and the doctors couldn't do any more. My sister who was awake saw me come in, and as I sat with her mouth I'm glad you made it, that was the last thing she said to me. That was harder to type than I thought it would be. When I was still a CNA, I was taking care of a patient who had had a stroke, and was nonverbal. In the two years I was at the nursing home, she never spoke. There was a blue chair in her room, and I was shocked when she spoke and said that's Paul's chair. I asked her if Paul was her husband and she nodded in an up and down, yes. After I left her room, I found another CNA who I knew was either related to her or a friend of the family. I told her how she spoke to me and referenced the blue chair. She confirmed that her deceased husband was named Paul, but I don't think she believed that she actually spoke to me. I worked a 7pm to 7am shift, so I was switched to another floor for the 11pm to 7am shift. She died very unexpectedly in her sleep around 4am. It dawned on me that she most likely spoke her last words about her husband Paul and the blue chair, and I hope that he was there with her. I can still picture her smiling face that night as she spoke to me.